Hey everyone, it's Nelson Miller here with PA Creative. I'm the creator of the Divi Carousel Maker, and today I'm excited to announce version 2.0 of our plugin. So this update has some big changes to the design settings and the ability to add layouts from the Divi library and a bunch of other features. So let's take a look at everything that's new. We have a full written blog post here over on the blog. You can click that link in the description to get over here. So let's just start with adding layouts from the Divi library. So you can use any layout section, row, or module that you either add in the Divi library or save to the library. And you can add each one of those as a slide in the carousel. So let's say you had a row of three testimonials. That row with three columns would be one slide. So you could add like four different rows in your library. So you have 12 testimonials, for example. And then every time you click next slide, it would actually move three across. So that's just one example. It also allows you to build like sections, you know, with multiple rows. Um, multiple, you know, that different column structures and whatever you want to do, add different modules. Like a good example is when you want to add, let's say, an image module in a column and then a text module and then maybe a button module. The only other option would be like the call to action module. Well, maybe you don't want that or maybe you want to have a blurb and then a button, things like that. Well, you can just build them now and save them to the library and add them as slides. Now the way that we achieve this is using a new module. So we're calling this module the carousel layouts module and it's a really, really simple module. And basically it, it allows us to just have a list of all the items in your Divi library and then you, you add the module and then you select which items you want to be in this carousel. All right, so here I am in the Divi builder. So I'm going to go ahead and add this new module right here. So we only add the module once per carousel. All right. So don't think of it as like adding, you know, the module for each slide. No, it's only, you just add one module. That's it. And we take care of the whole slides and stuff. All right. So let's see, what do I want to put in this? Well, here's a list of layouts that I have. Um, I want actually all four of these and I don't even know, I think these are really poorly made, but I'm just using these as examples. Um, a section, a row, a module, layout, just to show the variety of things you can do here. So once you're done, you know, make sure that you've enabled the carousel in the actual, you know, carousel, right? Now, you'll see, you know, the preview of all those layouts and they're just thrown together really quick. Oh, one very important thing I almost forgot. Because we're using like sections and rows, we we need to go in here to the number of columns and set this to one. Otherwise, if it's three, that's going to be like nine columns, essentially. You know what I mean? So that would be really bad. So change that setting because the, the, the main, you know, the main point, if that's a caveat or whatever, is that you're using a layout and that is one slide, right? Now, if you were just using like one module in the library or a row that had, you know, just one like column yeah right with one column and you had multiple of them well then you'd be fine you could have used multiple columns all right here's how this looks here's one of my sections there's a uh, one of my rows here's just a module just a single module and then here's uh, a layout with two two rows so <laughs> pretty pretty nice design here huh all right before i talk about these i'm going to skip ahead okay right here so highlight settings we had a toggle in the in the carousel called highlight settings. Those are now called design settings because we've added full design features for each slide. Now, remember before you could customize each module that is a slide, however you want in Divi. So there was really no need for this, but you'd be surprised people asked and they wanted to be able to customize them with the carousel instead of each module. Yeah, make things a little easier. So now each slide has its own design settings. So like I said, this toggle right here, design settings, that was called highlight settings. Now it's design settings. Now we still have this highlight option. In fact, this is a new option right here. 
we used to just be able to say highlight center module. Now we can choose you know, left, center, or right module as the highlighted one. So that's if I choose center, well, now I also have default and highlighted tabs here. A default module is the ones that are not highlighted, right? So I could come in here and adjust the spacing, the padding, the color, the opacity, the blur, the size, the border radius, border colors, and box shadows of all the ones that are not highlighted. And now I can come in here and do something special for the highlighted ones also, all right? So full design settings for highlighted or non-highlighted. Now, if you don't have any highlighted, that's fine too. If you say none, well, now you can have still use the default tab. See, if you, there's, it won't work to use the highlighted because none's highlighted, but you'll still have this default tab. Now, all the slides have all of these settings. So, yeah, let's just show you really quick. Um, if I want to, you know, obviously add a background, or if I want to make the border radius, you know, 10, Maybe I want to have a green border and have it like four like this and a box shadow. And you can see it looks kind of terrible, but look what I've been able to do. I didn't have to go in to each blurb. So you notice that my blurbs, I didn't style. I could have done that. I could have come in here to the blurb. I could have, you know, made this border green here and all that. But instead I did it on the carousel level and now it's, it's affecting every slide, okay? And like I was saying, if it was highlighted, there's some settings in here. Um, when you turn on highlighting, the opacity is going to be 50%. The blur is one pixel and the size is a little smaller. You can adjust that and make them you know, the same size. Maybe you just want them to be a different um, border color for the highlighted one. So in this instance, we don't have we don't have any styling for the highlighted one, so it's like a reverse highlight. But you get the idea. You would have to just simply adjust your design settings, default or highlighted, depending on how you want that to look. Now you may have noticed another setting here that's brand new, equalize module height. So a good example of this, I have this carousel here, and notice that it's just text, right? But notice the different heights. Now. If I was to add a border to each of these, you know, let's say I come in here and I would like to just add a nice little black border like that. Now I have a border on each one. So again, this is kind of like the opposite of what I was doing with the design settings. You can obviously style each module on its own. So on the front end here, notice how it looks. And you, you know, you may not like this. You may want them to be the same height but just have spacing you know, around to compensate. That's what this new setting does. So equalize module height right here. Now, but, but remember, if I turn this on, I still haven't added these borders in the design settings. They're still added in the module. So just turning that on, you're not gonna see any difference actually. So what I need to do is put that border in here, right? So I need to come in here and let's make it red just for uh, contrast. In fact, I'll still leave them on the blurbs just so you can see. So now the red is the equalized module heights from our setting. And I'm just resetting these so you can see it a little more clear. And there you go. Everything's equal. Now you're probably going to want to add some padding. And oh, and notice how they're aligned center. What if you want to align them to the top? You would go up here. Let's see, where is that one at? Uh, module vertical align. You could say top. And what was I saying? Design settings. Oh yeah, I may want to add some padding. Let's add some padding in here. Cool, there you go. So kind of a big deal for some people. That was a big request. Back in the blog post, I've already covered this, the highlighting, um, the equalize, the module height. Here I actually had a screenshot. Um, spacing settings. So actually let me point this out. There used to be a module spacing and that was it. There's carousel spacing, but then there's module spacing. And you've already seen that now in here we have spacing, which is like the margin, and then module padding, which you saw me add, this 30 you know, pixels of module padding is affecting the inside of each slide. Same with border settings, those are new. Oh, support for specialty sections. So you can kind of see from my diagram a little bit, 
Um, if you wanted to have a carousel just right here, let's say for example, if I wanted to have some text here and an image here in a specialty section, but I wanted the carousel right here, now you can do that. So like when you're adding a specialty section, let's see, which one was that? I think like this. Notice that these are, you know, the green rows. So I think I actually used that. Um, well, I can just replicate this real quick. There's text and then I would have had image. And then here is where I would want one column and then I could add a carousel. So let's just add some modules. In fact, let's use icons just for this little carousel. So right in here, I'm in this like, you know, sub column or whatever you call it. And I'm enabling the carousel. Cool, here we go. Here's my text, here's my image, and here's my carousel in here. Pretty cool. Now the last big thing here is scroll to module ID. And what that means is scroll to a specific slide. I sh should change that. If you want to have a link maybe at the top of your page and you want to have that link not not only go to just the carousel like row but you want it to like highlight in other words go to this um, a slide a, spe a specific slide in the carousel now you can do that so i actually have it set up here on my demo this here is just a button links it's linking to this carousel right here and what it's going to do it's going to highlight this fourth one right here in the middle. It's going to put that in the middle when I click this because I added this ID to the carousel and I'm activating putting this class in this button. So it's a little bit complicated. Not too bad if you just stop and think about it. All right. So we're adding, we're adding this, which is the ID of the carousel. We're adding this as the link, like the anchor, the anchor link. That's the link. And then we're adding this class, which is going to be like, notice the first part is the same as this link. And then we're saying go to module four. Little complicated, but I think if you focus, you'll see like, okay, so this is the link and this is the, this is the ID and then the ID of the carousel and the ID of the slide. Okay. So you're putting that in the button as a class. When I click this, it goes to number four and I've proved it. See if I move it around, now it's on six, quick. Click it, now it's on four again. Same thing, this is just another test, but this one's going to uh, the seventh one in this, uh, the ID of this carousel, the second one on the page is this. And then same thing, go to module seven. Now we're gonna go to slide seven. There you go. And again, I can prove it here on two. And if I click it again, we go to seven. All right, and last but not least, we have new scroll transition effects. Basically, this is what I mean is by when the carousel is moving, how does it move? Traditionally, you know, it's been a slide, right? It's just slides. And now we've added fade. Well, fade would be great for sliders. You kind of think of it as it just, it just fades into that. It doesn't actually slide. Another one is cover flow. You may have seen something similar to that where the, the sides kind of angle in as it slides around. It's like a 3D effect. Another one is stacked. They have an image. You can see it a little bit. I'll show you the, on the site. Flip and cube. So I guess it's five new uh, scrolling effects. And this kind of brings us up to par with like what you would think of in a traditional carousel plugin. So when you're in the Divi Builder here, you can see I am in the scroll of scroll settings toggle down at the bottom here. It says scroll transition effect. And here you can see um, slide will be default and then fade. We can show you that. And again, fade is it's, it's hard to see it here, but if I had different colors and things, it would make more sense. So fades pretty basic cover flow. Let's show you that next. And some of these, so cover flow and I think stack would need to have an odd number. Um, you know, one, three, five. All right, so here you can see cover flow. That's with three columns. It would also work with five. And if I put it on stack, so stack looks like that. Just, you know, if you, if you like that, there you go. Um, next one we'll do is flip. Now flip will be just, fl uh, yeah, let me clarify. Flip and cube, think about it. It's, it's something that's turning. So it's only going to work for one column. 
Okay, just one column. All right, so you can see it's actually automatically switched to one column. So if I navigate here, it flips. All right, so it's like literally turning from front to back. All right, and then let's do cube. And it's like, it's like a box, right? So it's like turning from the next side to the next side. Flip was like front to back, and now cube is like, like a four-sided. <laughs> yeah, you, you get it. Um, there you go. And and this another caveat is that you need a height and width. Right here, it's on 350. You can adjust this uh, height and width. Now this will only show up for flip and cube. It won't apply to these other ones. So we're excited about that. We actually will have a bunch of demos. Um, coming very soon actually we're going to release like a whole bunch maybe like 50 demos as downloads uh, within the next several weeks hopefully and we'll have different you know features obviously of this update included in that and as always we always have improvements and fixes we get support requests for here and there and anytime there's like something that affects one or two customers we always you know include it in the next update also so we've done uh, a couple of those. You can check that in the change log, view our documentation. We'll get that updated. All right, so there you go. That's version 2.0 of our Divi Carousel Maker. If you like this, give me a thumbs up on the video. Leave a comment. Love to hear your comments. We are always trying to think of new features. In fact, we have more coming as well, but you can let us know if you have some ideas. And we really hope you enjoy this update. Enjoy these new features, explore them. And yeah, have fun. We'll see you in the next one.